Hey y'all, hey, welcome back to another episode of Two Divine Women. It's your host here, Shanai the Great. <laughs> and the other host named Bella the Baddie. And today y'all, we're going to talk about cultural appropriation mm. and cultural appreciation. What are the differences? When are you trying too hard to be a culture that's not your own? And when is it inappropriate? So stay tuned as we get into the episode. guys as we said earlier today today's topic is cultural appreciation versus cultural appropriation and what's the difference because it is a difference y'all do you would you agree sure. absolutely absolutely so let's get into this topic culture appropriation how would you well i think i want to start off by saying there's there's nothing wrong with having an appreciation for certain cultures if you're not part of that culture. Mm -hmm. My myself, I am Caribbean. Both of my parents are Jamaican. We have other cultures as well in our family. So I've always grown up with people being fascinated with what my culture is, and people asking me to like speak the language, as well as people who are not of that culture mm -hmm. trying to like have the dreadlocks and try to speak like in a in a quasi Jamaican fashion. Cringe moment. Cringe moment, yeah. And so in their in their perspectives, they feel like, you know what? I'm only big enough, that's a Pato thing. I'm only big enough your culture because it's so dope. Like I grew up listening to Bob Marley. I grew up with a lot of Jamaican friends. And like, you know, um, I just really learned to like the culture. So in that case, I would say when I was younger, I thought they were trying too hard to be like a Jamaican, yeah. you know? Cause it's like, if you like my culture, but you are someone who's not Jamaican, like especially, sorry to say, if it's like a white person who's trying to speak the Patois and have the dreadlocks, it's a little more cringe central. I never understood that. Uh, go ahead. No, 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 <laughs> speak your piece. <laughs> I just, I never, I never got that because it was like, like you said, okay, I get that you do like my culture and where I'm from, but you don't have to put it on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can enjoy the reggae, you can enjoy other people with, I don't really call them drags, I call I like the word locks, you could actually enjoy that and not have to put that on for yourself. You could admire it from afar, if that makes sense. It, because it, it just looks weird. To me, can't speak for everybody. Yeah. It just looks weird to see someone that's not of that culture. I think of Halloween every time I see that. I'm not, and I'm not trying to be funny. I, this you know is your I, perception, yeah. Right. So... Okay, so how would you say, has anybody ever tried to come to you and big up or kind of overly do something of your culture and you're like, okay, it's just, it's just too much? So before I answer the question of when I think people are being cringy or disrespectful when people try too hard, I want to say, like when I was younger, I did feel like when people were rocking the dreadlocks or trying to speak in Pops, I thought it was a little cringe. But then as I got older, I realized, you know what, some people grew up in that environment, mm -hmm. and so they're comfortable personifying what they consider the Jamaican culture to be. And I, I guess my perception changed on that. So I was like, you know what, I actually respect people trying to put effort into trying to speak Patois and trying to learn the dances. And I think some people, when they're not, of course, of that culture, they feel like they are showing homage and respect. Mm -hmm. So I think it really depends on the intention behind it, because some people, like growing up, a lot of people, A, didn't even think I was Jamaican because of how I looked. but. Um, there's also Asian heritage in my family as well, so you know a lot of people would try to, um, I guess instead of showing appropriation, they would try to show cultural appreciation by making assumptions about different parts of my ethnicity. So I might have guys who are not part of that ethnicity say, "Oh, I like you know the Asian in you because of X, Y, and Z," and then they would show, like they would tell me things about that culture based off of stereotypes that they might have embrace if they knew friends or people of that other culture. Now was that brownie points or was that like... No, that was Crit Central. Yeah. Because it's like, like I had a guy, you know, like this was a white guy who was trying to hit on me and he was telling me how, um, A, he thought I was Hawaiian. And then he was telling me stereotypes about Hawaiian people that he knew from ex limited experience. So I was like, first of all, you don't even have the ethnicity right. And then on top of that, what was problematic was that this person was trying to um, kind of push um, that they knew things about that culture by showing, trying to show off by being culturally sensitive and it was just doing oh, the most. Yeah. 
Yeah. So that's why I think it can be problematic if you're trying to be with someone of another culture. And to me, I think you should be more um, grateful and show more curiosity instead of trying to come in and be like, oh, I know y'all Jamaican people like this. Right. Or like... Definitely agree. Yeah. Or yeah. like a white guy who's, who's like trying to be cool with me and be down with the squirrel. He's like, oh, you know, I know about Bob Marley's music. First of all, I only asked you how your day was. You don't got to start talking about Bob Marley to try to get me to like you. It's just like... <laughs> I literally said, hey, what's up? After you came up to me, and you're like, oh, you Jamaican Bob Marley. <laughs> no, fam, chill. It's okay. Like, Bob Marley, I'm dead. Oh, I'm dead. wow. You don't look Jamaican because you don't have dreadlocks. Neither does Sean Paul. He's Jamaican and Portuguese and Chinese. And, yeah. And there's some black in there, too. Like, the whole thing of non-black people wearing dreadlocks to me is not weird because Jamaica, even though it is mostly black, you have Chinese, you have German, you have... Mm. East Indian people, so if they grow up Rastafari, they're gonna rock the dreadlocks because that's them embracing their own culture. Right. So to that's me, that's all they know. So I get that. But yeah. if you're from Boston, not trying to be funny, if you're from Boston and there's nothing in that area is like that, just admire it from afar. Mm -hmm. be, be inquisitive, you know? That, that, again, that's just me. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm gonna ask you this What do you feel about people who are not um, black? Well, I'll give you two scenarios. Okay. An Asian person growing up in an inner, inner city black environment or like a white person growing up in a very Latin environment. Because I can definitely say for me, Ooh. I grew up in Hialeah. Hialeah is straight Spanish. Like, okay. straight up Cuban. People don't speak English there at all. So if you're trying to go to a Taco Bell in Hialeah or if you're trying to go to Wendy's, they're coming out in Spanish. If you don't speak English, they are not trying to serve you. So I grew up in Hialeah. I spoke Spanish growing up because that was my environment. The school that I went to, they taught in Spanish. There was no translator. There was, really? Yeah, there was no translator there. I was someone who was from Jamaica, my parents are Jamaican, and my years of learning English was very much Spanish influenced. So my teacher would speak in Spanish. Sometimes she'd speak in English because she knew I was not Hispanic. I had to figure out what everybody was saying. I had to learn Spanish on my own. I buy context clues, and when the, the, a lot of the students that were in the school were from Cuba or they were from the Dominican Republic, so when their parents would pick them up, they thought I was Dominican, they would come to me speaking Spanish, and I had to figure out what was being said. Mm. I grew up dancing merengue, salsa, bachata, and all those types of music um, dances, more so than I knew about my Jamaican culture, because that was the environment that right. I grew up in. That makes sense. So I think if somebody is growing up in that scenario, and they're not of that culture, they have no choice, because it's like sink or swim. If you don't adapt to the environment of that culture, you're not going to make it. I definitely agree. Yeah, but again, I take it back to, like I said, the point of someone who's living in Boston and you are just cringing, you know, this whole stereotypical thing. But if you, like you said, if you were born there and that's all you know, no one can fault you for that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're not, it's not like you're again putting on a facade it's all you freaking know so it's like this is me yeah. so you're not being fake with it yeah and that's same thing with the um spanish person who lives in an all white community or what have you um that's my take on it so yeah yeah that makes sense like and, and like i said i think the thing is looking at how old you are and if you had control over the situation i mean like me growing up in hialeah i had no control over that and I loved it. Like, I learned a lot about the cultures, especially, like, I love Cuban people. I love the Cuban culture. I grew up, like I said, my best friends were Cuban. Their family spoke a lot of Spanish. But I was still very proud of being Jamaican. Like, if people ever asked me, when they made assumptions that I was Dominican, mm -hmm. I would be like, no, my parents are Jamaican. And I was very proud of that. So even though I was submerged in that culture, and I picked up on Spanish and the dances as well, I was still always repping Jamaica. You knew your roots. Yeah. yeah, so I think sometimes people forget that, like when they're in an environment that's way different than what they are, and they're, you can't blame people for trying to acclimate to that culture because they have no choice, it's a matter of survival. But when they forget their own roots and they try to adopt somebody else's roots and make that their own, I think that's where the problem is because that person doesn't really have a strong identification of self. Right. So they end up losing themselves to what other external culture and then they might prefer to date people of that background and they might um, end up neglecting their own identification in favor of somebody else's quote unquote roots or race. Mm. And then I think the problem with that is when people end up embodying stereotypes of that race thinking that that's all that there is to it and they end up making themselves look crazy as hell. Wow. And I think that goes even further because like you said, the, this person is actually 
um, dating people of that race, so you forget who you are. So if you have offspring, you can't really tell them where they're from because they only know one side because you adapted that spouses or that person's culture. Mm -hmm. So they just it's just like one sided all the way around. Mm -hmm. So I also think um, I'm a little more I'm a little more accepting of different cultures, practicing cultural appropriation or appreciation rather, if they're a person of color. Mm -hmm. But there has to be level of respect. My ex-boyfriend was born in India, and he lived in this country. He moved here when he was 10 years old, but he grew up around a lot of Spanish people and black people. So he ended up taking on what he saw as both characteristics of in his personality. He wasn't overly urban. He was on some levels. Um, and when he was like that, I used to be like, why are you talking like that? Like, why are you act? Why, you know, like he, his school was, was mixed. So he would, he sacked the pants for a little bit. And I was like, you need to pull your pants up. Like, mm. don't think that because you grew up around black people, that's all there is to that culture. So I would make sure like to check him on certain things. Like, I'm like, you, you can't say the N word around me. That's disrespectful. Like you, there's certain things you're not going to be able to do because me as a, Jam a Jamaican American, my, our cultures are different than African American cultures on some levels. There's mm -hmm. a lot of similarities, but there are also differences. And I'm not saying that to be separate and say one's bad and one's good, but there are differences. So I felt like, okay, you might see me as a black person, but that doesn't mean that you get a chance to personify these stereotypes by acting in a way that you think represents just Jamaican culture when it doesn't. So to try to sweep the same, to try to sweep I guess use the same paintbrush to personify certain stereotypes is problematic because you're thinking, oh, she's black and I'm comfortable with black people. That means I can't do it. Yeah, it's like, and I have a really big problem when white people grow up around all black people and they end up thinking, like, there's a difference between thinking that you're black or white and there's a difference between saying I'm comfortable doing certain things and I have black friends who permitted me the opportunity to, like, use that N word. Oh, that hits me all the time where it's like, oh, I have three black friends, so I, if you can count on one hand how many black friends you have, it's a problem, because it's like that's your, um, your rebuttal, or your safe thing, oh, I can say it because I have three friends, I, I know Tyrone and, and Starisha and all these people. Oh, I, like, I like sleeping with black men, so I can say certain things. No, you can't. No, you can't. Like, no. And I think it's a level of comfort, like some people are comfortable because they're like, oh, well, when I say the N-word around my homeboy Rashad, he doesn't, he doesn't check me. I'm not your homeboy Rashad, okay? I right. think that you, there should be a certain level of respect. And I think that's where cultural appreciation comes from. You grow up around all black people and you try to figure out how you can approach a situation from a respectful standpoint. But y'all, we're gonna get back into this. We're gonna pay some bills, so make sure you hang tight because this is gonna be good. You don't wanna miss this. We'll be back. So, Shania, what is this beautiful piece? That is a really beautiful necklace made by Seafoam Seagates. And what's really cool about their products is they have natural beads here. So you've got pearls, real pearls, and you've got a really cool industrial design with this the chains. Really pretty. Yeah. And then there's another piece here that's really similar. So you've got, you've got crystals here as well as glass, and you've got the chains here. And then there's also rings that they make. Ooh. So you've got like this turquoise looking ring, and then you've got this ring here that has Life is Sweet. Really positive and fun things. And I also, eyes on these. look at these earrings. It's very regal. There's, you've got the matching ring. Very like a, like, nine, like 14th century French look. So if you guys ever want to check out the jewelry, you can check out Seafoam Sea Gifts on Etsy. So it's www.etsy.com slash shops slash Seafoam Sea Gifts. And it's all together. You guys make sure you check that out, okay? Before we left, we was talking about... Um, people adopting different cultures and things of that nature so um well we we stopped remember we were talking about the n-word and how mm -hmm. like some people will permit their non-black friends to say the n-word and i was like nah all because rashad didn't check you doesn't mean that it's okay and i think a problem with that is that it shows too much of a comfort with disrespecting parts of the culture that you claim that you appreciate mm. so i feel like if there is going to be some cultural appreciation from the side of the non-black person, there needs to be a reverence about the culture, which means that you respect the culture that you would never disrespect the culture. That goes for men and females of that culture. So for example, Big facts. not saying that interracial dating is ever wrong. We would not, a lot of us would not be here if it were not for that, but I think there needs to be boundaries drawn. For example, 
you're a white person who likes black people. Doesn't matter if you're male or female, but let's use white women for example. Mm -hmm. You're a white woman who likes black men and you're comfortable because you've dated a lot of black men. They have not checked certain things that you've said. So maybe in the past you used the N-word toward them or about them and they didn't stop you. That's rude. Um, that word has a lot of pain. And to me, if you're going to be involved with someone who is black, you have to know enough about that culture to know what's okay and what's not okay. Secondly, if you are a white woman and you are dating black men, say the black man does not like you know, black woman, doesn't mean that he's self-hating, but he just doesn't like them for whatever reason, it's not okay for you to talk down about black women while trying to wear the hairstyles, while trying to be on the up and up with black culture, which nothing wrong with trying to adopt certain parts of what you conceive black culture to be, but you cannot love a black man and love his culture and talk down about the same woman who created him. Girl, I think I would have write yourself for this because like you said, for you to love a specific culture and you say you're down for this and you're all about this, if you really love how I feel, if you really love that culture, you're not going to want to say the N-word because you know that N-word carries pain. You know where it came from. You're not going to want to do that because that it would hurt the person, no matter if you use it playfully or what have you. You're not, you as a person for the love of that culture, culture, culture you're not going to want to do that. Exactly. You know what I mean? So. Exactly. And I really think it's problematic when you have, say you have a white woman, black man relationship, and say he doesn't go around speaking ill of black women, he just maybe for whatever reason doesn't mesh with them and that's fine, but the white woman that he's with or the non-black woman he's with goes around putting them down. And I think it's problematic when he doesn't defend them because even if he doesn't particularly like that black woman, he's got to think about the fact that he has black women who have raised him, his aunts, his sisters, his mother. And so if he's not standing up for them while this woman of a different race is ignorantly putting them down, he's got to look at himself and figure out why he doesn't feel these women are worthy of being protected right. from this person who, you know, we know slavery is over, but that person's bloodline does have slave masters in it. And then she's going around or this person's going around speaking ill of black women, it's not even just about the fact that it's you with this non-black woman anymore who does not like black women. She has no place to do that. She's never dated black women before. So she has no right to say, oh, y'all black women are ghetto. That's why black men don't like you because you do. That's not her place. She's not a historian. She doesn't know enough about black women because again, she's not directly experienced black women. And I think it's, it's the person, the black men's responsibility to say, hey, even though I don't date them, you have no right doing that because you don't know. And you, what you're doing is speaking from a place of ignorance and limited knowledge, and you're really making yourself look bad because I have black women in my family who I love and respect me, and if you really are down for my culture, you would not put yourself in a situation to say certain things. Check that at the door because she's disrespecting you too. Have a backbone and let that person, don't let that person get away with saying things about your race that are built on stereotypes or feeling a false sense of superiority because they are white and they have you and they can be very confrontational and and so forth and they're trying to be cool with your culture no absolutely not that's not okay you better go off sis oh. <laughs> no for real it's, it's just it's really ignorant and i don't think that type of ignorance should be permitted and that can go for any race you can be a white woman with a latin guy because they you know every race can do that mm -hmm. you can be uh, an indian woman with a black man it doesn't matter the combination i just wanted to illustrate that because you know black women and white men is a little more predominant you see that and i have specifically seen white women who have been with black men who will look at black women with envy or will look at black women with a sense of spite and will say these negative things toward them because they feel comfortable because he did not man up and say, listen, so-and-so, you can't be disrespecting black women like that. All because I don't, I don't date them doesn't mean that you have to put them down. Mm. I don't know, why do you think that would happen anyway? Um, I mean, maybe in some cases the black guy does, I'm not saying all black men who date white women are, are self-hating, but I think in that particular case, maybe he doesn't value black women or he doesn't value himself. So he doesn't see the need to defend. Mm. That's just my opinion, he doesn't see the need to defend these women because he's not associate he doesn't associate himself with them so maybe he just allows that to happen but i think it's also a lack of self-respect why would you allow someone to disrespect someone who looks like you or who you have relatives of that certain race and they're not standing up to me that's that's very weak in my opinion that's very weak yeah yeah that, that's actually a whole nother segue to a, a, a topic that we could probably talk about mm -hmm. another time actually yeah um so we've okay so we talked about the whole style the clothes the different um cultures that's what about the food mm, the food 
<laughs> well, I will take it from my own experience. Um, I dated, like I said before, I dated someone who was born and raised in India for a while, and he was pretty Americanized. Um, didn't fit any of the stereotypes of what people would assume of an Indian person. He was very, very comfortable, very confident, very handsome. Um, he's doing very well in life right now, if I might add. So it was a very good relationship because um, we do have Indian, East Indian people in my family as well, but I felt very much connected to the culture, no problems at all with that. We were talking about marriage. So I spent a lot of time around his family and I was open to their religion as well as the food. And a lot of Indian food is very similar to Jamaican food. We have Indians in Jamaica, so mm. you know the curry is not a Jamaican thing that's actually from India mm -hmm. and even the ganja. Um, you, you, you see ganja growing in Jamaica, but um, back in the day, like mystical, mystical Indian, some, some people in India were into mysticism and did smoke ganja to have a higher spiritual ascension. So when the British colonized India and Jamaica, they brought a lot of Chinese people and Indian people to the island, and these people brought some things with them. Indians brought ganja to Jamaica. It's funny how you hear. Yeah, you hear. You think of when you think of Jamaica, you think of ganja being a Jamaican thing, but it's really the, the Indian people who brought it to the island. And shout out, thank y'all for that. Um, anyway, but that's even the word ganja is not. It's not African. It's an Indian right. or Hindustani based word. So to make a long story short, when I was with him, I was cooking more Indian food because my mentality was, I'm dating someone from this country. We're gonna have kids together. I want the kids to have a very rich cultural understanding. So I was making curry their way. I was I was making the roti. I was making dalpuri. I was making all these Indian foods, and I was even learning the language. And I made sure it was out of a place of respect because I didn't want his parents thinking that I was not willing to embrace mm. the beautiful culture that they have. Um, and I think when you are dating someone of a different culture, it's very respectful to try to at least cook the food that that person would like because you're showing a respect and appreciation for what that culture is. Now I know in some cases, um, whatever you love, you can't cook. I, I mean, <laughs> it, there's recipes out there. You don't have to know how to cook. I'm extra, so I'm just like, no, but it's, you go online, you, you do, you follow the recipes. Cooking is not hard. So the thought that counts. Yeah. And like, I know some people are extra, like, um, <laughs> This is one thing that pisses me off, okay? So you have people who are culturally appropriating when they're trying to adopt, um, like they'll try to adopt cult foods from other cultures, but they'll whitewash it or they'll make it Americanized. So let's talk about this, Nabella. I'm Jamaican. So one of the most popular Jamaican foods is jerk chicken. It's bomb, right? Facts. You, yes. You know. Yes. What does jerk chicken look like? <sighs> it looks, it has, it has a lot of sauces on it. Mm -hmm. Those sauces, that's all I remember. Okay. Um, it's good. It looks like chicken. Yes. It should look like chicken, you guys. Um, and it has spices to it. Right. Okay? It's, it has a certain recipe, and it's hot, too. Right. So. So tell me why I went online, okay, and I saw a jerk chicken recipe. I know this was made by a white person. They had cut up bananas in the jerk chicken. So they were they were they were chicken strips, right? Like little chick Tyson chicken strips that you get in the store, you know, maybe it's a little cook. They put dull bananas, they chopped those bananas up and they put them in the, they put it in the jerk chicken. And they called it jerk chicken. And I was like, I don't wanna cuss. Because you know, I'm trying to keep my blood sugar, my blood level, my blood, my blood pressure down. I don't wanna get mad. But the, the, it wasn't like it was plantain because we will have plantain, right. which is a specialized banana. Oh that yes, we fry and we have it with jerk chicken as a side item. They had the the, the bananas in the chicken like it was some kind of chicken salad. Maybe, maybe they got it mixed up. Maybe they thought they probably bought the wrong. No, it looked yellow Maybella. and it looked green. I'm trying to play devil's advocate here. I mean, okay, it's probably. I, I, you know what? That's fair. We'll give them that. Maybe they thought. That they oh they said planted no no as it was a gym, too right it, it was, was it was not cooked they did not attempt to cook this they did not attempt to do anything there was no cabbage and I get it you're not gonna you're not gonna make it like an authentic person but my, the reason why I'm bringing that up is because some people will say okay I'm with somebody of a social, certain culture I want to make their food stick to how the original recipe goes do not if you bring me some jerk chicken with some raw bananas I'm <laughs> slapping you in the face. Okay, I'm going to slap you in the face and then I'm going to continue slapping you in the face because now you're trying to disrespect my culture. And you know that there, there are people who talk about like being invited to the cookout. That means that you're a non-black person Here we go. who's cool with, you're down with black people and they're inviting you to the cookout. 
Don't show up to the cookout with potato salads with raisins in them. You know that's another white person thing. Am I saying all white people cook like that? No, because I have white friends. I'm not trying to disrespect white people. White people are cool. But if someone invites you to the cookout and you are a white person who's never made any soul food or any Caribbean food, just bring some wine. Bring some bread. Paper plates. Yes. Chips. Chips. Soda. Yeah. Yes. Don't I mean. <laughs> just saying. And speaking of that, like, <laughs> R.I.P. My heart broke a, a, a while ago when Chad. My heart broke. And when you said potato salad with the raisins, I did a video on TikTok with that sound. We're gonna we're gonna play it somewhere here, but. Chachala knew, <laughs> Chanai knew, we all know. If you're invited to the cookout, like she said, stick to what you know. Bring a casserole. It's what you know. Yeah, yes, you know what I mean? We'll, we'll respect it. Yes. Don't remix nothing. Please, please don't put no remixes to nothing. <laughs> so. Listen, and it's, and it's, not, as, it's not as being rude, because like I said, it's never, I'm not here to just, I have a lot of white friends who are awesome people, they're great people, they're very accepting, and I, and I love the relationship that we have. But if there's certain things you are unsure of with that culture, I suggest you go to a person who's skilled in knowing how to, like if you're if you're dating a Spanish a Spanish person, their food is also very there's a specific way to cook it. Mm -hmm. Ask Abuelita, like how do I make this? What do I do? Is there a good source? Because I do want to appreciate your culture, but I'm from a different background. I don't know what y'all do. Please put me on. Let let Abuela show you. Let See. you know. Let let her See. show you. She will show you. She will show you with love. She loves you know. With, with my and they love to cut it up and then kick it. Oh so yeah. They, they, they love students. So yes. Just ask. That's to, but it's, again, it's about being respectful. And, and uh, observing what that culture likes and coming from a place of I'm a student and I want to learn. I don't want to disrespect your culture because race is something that is a very sensitive topic. Mm -hmm. And if people don't have a rich culture and they're not really used to having to be culturally sensitive, dating someone of another race will allow you the space to become racially sensitive as well as culturally sensitive to what that person likes. And it doesn't take a lot to do that. But if, you, if you're like, oh, well, I've dated enough black people to know what y'all like, and I'm just going to make assumptions, and, you know, I talk like y'all, I talk like this, I, I sag my pants, you're doing the most, and you look dumb as hell. I said what I said. Period. So, this has been a fun episode. I've, I've learned a lot of information, as well as hopefully. me go hopefully. off <laughs> with, the, with the jerk chicken and the bananas. Sis Stop it. went off. No, make no raisins. You. No raisins. That's... King Strong said, no raisins. Oh, hell no, Karen. No raisins in a potato salad. <laughs> so this has been another episode of Two Divine Women. Stay tuned for the next one. We will see you when we get back. Bye, beautiful people.